Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TACO Tuesday. This is Rich Medeiros, one of the senior systems engineers here at TACO, and today I'll be your moderator. The presentation will be done by Brett Zerba. Before we get uh, into the presentation, there's a few things I'd like to tell everyone about. First of all, just a quick uh, intro for TACO. TACO is a manufacturing company of HVAC components, and we literally have uh, the thousands of uh, individual products that we manufacture. We're probably best known for our uh, pumps, expansion tanks, air and dirt separators, buffer storage tanks, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Brett's going to be talking about flow-through expansion tanks and air and dirt separators today. But a little bit more about the company. We've been in business just over 102 years. It's currently owned by the White family, headed by John Hazen White, Jr., and uh, John has for his senior management team, led by Cheryl Merchant, who is our global CEO and president. A uh, couple of housekeeping things that you should be aware of is that uh, Brett has put together four handouts. You can see them in the handout drop-down section on the right. And uh, we are going to be, actually we are recording as we say right now. I believe we're recording right now. Oh, yes, we're recording right now. And so the recording will be available uh, to you in roughly 24 hours. You'll get an email notifying you that the, you'll have access to the recording. And you'll also have access to uh, a PDH uh, certificate, Professional Development Hour Certificate. Um, I will be acting, as I said, as today's moderator. I will uh, monitor your questions. So if you could type into the question area that you can both hear me and see the opening screen for Brett, that will tell us that we're currently broadcasting correctly. Yes, sounds like we've got uh, a couple of folks out there who can hear us loud and clear. Well, that sounds great. So in, in about uh, five seconds, I'm going to turn it over to Brett. Um, and he's going to go through the presentation. And again, I will monitor the questions, uh, so you don't have to wait till the end of the presentation. Please type in your questions uh, as they come up. I will ask Brett to pause periodically so we can answer your questions. That usually works out quite well if we do that. Uh, that way we don't get too far away from the individual um, slide or uh, graphic that you'd like to have a question. Um, oh, Jim Prisby said he can hear us loud and clear. So that's a good thing. So Brett, why don't you take it away and I will monitor the questions as they come in. Thanks, Rich. Hi, everybody. Uh, Brett Zerba, uh, applications slash training engineer with Taco. Been with the company uh, 25 years. And uh, based on, I, I did review uh, quite a few of the names uh, prior to starting that uh, most of you have been on some of these, so you know you know the routine. Uh, it, it, it's an exciting time for, for us here at Takeo. Uh, the, our division, uh, you know, Rich explained about Takeo a little bit. Headquarters are in Cranston, Rhode Island. We have a, a division for our welded products uh, division that does work and they're located in Fall River, Mass. And that team down there, uh, worked extensively on these two new products, and it's very exciting to have them uh, available uh, for, for, for the industry. Uh, and they are available. Uh, you can get more information on our website or through your Takeo rep, uh, but they are uh, products that are currently being ordered and manufactured and produced and delivered uh, and installed. So uh, th that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, so, you know, I was going to say, Brett, this is kind of exciting when you think about it. Um, you know, we have... Uh, this flow through expansion tank and this air and dirt magnetic air and dirt separator. I mean, these are these are uh, game changing products, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool as you go through this stuff. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. You, you know, uh, the HVAC hydronic industry, HVAC industry is a uh, it's a dinosaur, right? It's been around for a, a long, long time, uh, but but there are uh, changes, innovations over time. And, and, and a lot of times these innovations are because of different things that have happened uh, in, in our industry, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. And that's kind of why these two um, uh, products are available uh, and, and uh, our, our folks in Fall River uh, uh, developed them. Uh, and, and there's some really uh, neat uh, stuff. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. So first I'm gonna go through the Takos flow through expansion tank, all right? Well, first off, 
what is it? All right. Well, there's a picture of it on the right hand side, but we'll, we'll get into more details uh, very sh shortly. How does it work? You know, it's important for, for all of us to feel comfortable in how it works. And when, you know, when we go through that, uh, please ask the questions. And one thing that Rich and I can't emphasize enough, uh, questions are, 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 are learning tools for all of us. Uh, me, uh, me, Rich, and, and everyone on, on here. So please ask away. Why do we need it? Uh, you know, uh, obviously, when you, when you develop a product, a manufacturing company or anyone, uh, you know, that develops products, uh, there has to be a why uh, and that we want to make sure people understand why. And then obviously we do want to talk about some questions. So let's let's get going. Well, first off, right, there's a picture of the expansion tank, but it's important to realize it's a it's a modified Taco CA full acceptance bladder style expansion tank. And there's um, many of you, if not all of you, are familiar with our CA tanks. Uh, uh, maybe you've spec them, seen them installed, uh, uh, sat through some of uh, our webinars. Rich does a great job on expansion tank webinars. But keep in mind, this flow through tank is a modified CA full acceptance bladder style expansion tank. So Everything that you're, well, almost everything, just about everything you're familiar with with the CA tank, the Taco typical CA tank is also part of this flow through tank. So that's that's something to to to, to make sure you're 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 comfortable with up front. Uh, and, and this area up here is going to be the difference, okay? That the attachment, uh, uh, how it's piped, and we'll get into the details of that very very shortly. So here's a, uh, a, a rendition of the flow-through expansion tank, the difference, okay? So here's the top of a traditional expansion tank, and there's your connection. Here's the top of a traditional flow-through expansion tank, excuse me, the uh, an, a CA flow-through. And actually, the designation is uh, CAF. So instead of CA, it's a CAF tank. Uh, so just so you know some of the terminologies, but what it is, it has a flow inlet and a flow outlet. But again, it's a conventional CA series, full acceptance bladder style expansion tank, all right, with a patent pending auxiliary valve. So uh, the, the team in Fall River, uh, led by Ron Falcon and, uh, and others down there, uh, worked hard on this design. And this is a patent pending. And uh, some of you may have been involved with uh, uh, trying to get a patent that uh, it doesn't happen overnight uh, so uh, it is pending but uh, uh, at some point in time uh, down the road that pending will be gone and it will be a patented uh, uh, item by Taco, which is uh, very exciting as well so it does have a flow inlet and a flow outlet right so that is the connection there and uh, you could see whoop, you could see the water a, a portion of the water is going to be diverted down here and we'll get into some more of that detail as we go so that's that's what it is so let's let's look at it a little more how does it work okay so the water flows in water flows out but a a, a portion of that water is diverted down this tube down the turbulation tube i like that name turbulation i actually i think i pronounced it correctly so and this is a full acceptance bladder that has water in it right so uh, keep in mind uh, this unit uh, this co component also is on a hot water system or chilled water system it has water going in and out of it as it expands so you just keep that in mind as well so this water also goes in it and swirls it around and then the air is on the outside uh, to, to, to keep it uh, you know the p1 equal the p1 v1 equals uh, p2 v2 that uh, rich goes over so uh, just keep that in mind so this precision flow channeling head design allows water to constantly circulate through the full acceptance bladder preventing water stagnation. That's the key, that's the key. By, by allowing a little bit of that water to go through there, um, it is going to prevent stagnation inside that tank. And that's, the, uh, that's really the, the driving force of why this, uh, why this was developed, okay? And maybe some of you are already reading uh, between the lines and we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about it very, very shortly uh, about what happens when water has stagnation or can happen in, in, in the system. So that's what uh, this is preventing. So a little bit of water is gonna uh, go through there. So this tube, this internal tube, um, turbulation tube has some water holes in it, right? Um, full acceptance, water flows out, pretty straightforward. So that's this head right here. That's this head right here is allowing the water to go through. 
and then some of that water goes down in here, internal tubes with water holes. And actually the holes, are, uh, I'm gonna show you a, a diagram very shortly, and, uh, and there's that full uh, acceptance. Here's some of the uh, 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 performance data. Um, we can go, you can see the sizes here from very small to very, very big. Uh, really, this performance data is almost identical um, to the uh, to traditional CA performance data. You can see the different heights, the different sizes, the different flow rates, maximum flows. Um, you know, uh, 125 psi, uh, I'm sure, is is an 80 percenter um, uh, for most applications. We can go higher. Uh, higher pressures are available. 240 degrees maximum operating temperatures. And again, uh, if you ever needed something higher. Uh, work with your TACO rep uh, or whatnot, uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, they could, they can work something out there. Uh, but nonetheless, here's some of the performance data, but that's pretty pretty similar to a traditional uh, flow through expansion tank. Some of the other features, right? So it does have a separate inlet and outlet uh, configuration for flow, full flow in the tank, a replaceable heavy duty uh, a bladder. You've seen that on, on a picture before. Uh, that internal tube to prevent flow restriction in the tank. So uh, that tube's in there to prevent that flow restriction. Stainless steel connections, that helps us uh, get the proper uh, certifications for this. It is designed, very important, very, very important for anything that has a uh, pressure in it, any type of vessel that has pressure. Um, it is designed and constructed and tested to ASME um, uh, re requirements, right? So that's very, very important. Um, uh, you, you, I, I can't stress enough and some of you folks have been to our facility, uh, the, the welded products facility located in Fall River, Mass, and their, their production facility and their, their welding um, uh, capabilities there are second to none, second to none. And yes, I know I work for Taco, but anyone that's been there and has any experience with welding, and you look at some of the welds on some, some of this product, the, pro the, the products that these folks do down there, it's second to none. And uh, they, it can be NSF and ANSI uh, uh, certified, and then uh, ops, uh, off, we do offer higher working pressures are optional as well. So uh, just keep that in mind as you go through this. So when we talk about how does it work, okay, there's, a, please, please, if you do get involved with specifying one of these, um, look, read through the instruction sheet, read through the instruction sheet. It goes through how to uh, properly install it. And, and the do's and don'ts, and, 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 but there's some critical components uh, or thought processes when, when you install it. And, and, and if you look here, we, we have two different diagrams on how to install this in the piping arrangement, okay? Two different diagrams on how to install it in the piping arrangement. And this is one of them. This is when, um, uh, where the flow, the total flow in the system exceeds this chart over here. See, so there's different model numbers, different ranges of model numbers. If you know our takeo model numbers uh, for, for this component, you can see that these model numbers here. So if, if the flow exceeds this, you need to set it up like this. So a portion of that flow goes through here and the remainder of the flow goes through here, uh, uh, goes straight through. So a bypass valve, uh, maybe a, a, you know some type of valve to uh, throttle it down. Or, or, or isolate it and, and, and have the correct flows going in each direction. There's actually a, there's actually a warning in there that we can't guarantee it if uh, if you exceed these flows that are shown on the left hand side. So that's how you set it up. Um, that's how you set it up if you want it to um, uh, if the flow exceeds it. You do size these the same way you would size any expansion tank. And if you remember. Uh, Rich's uh, presentation, you know, you need the, uh, the, 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 the working pressures, high and low, the temperatures, uh, system volume, what, what the water is, uh, I mean, what the fluid is, water, glycol mixture, whatever. Uh, you, you need all of that, working pressures. Um, and once you have all that information, you're going to size these tanks the same way, right, right through our um, app. Uh, uh, and hopefully I'll have some time. I'll go to our website and select one of these, you'll see the difference, but nonetheless, you can uh, select those. So th this is an option to, to uh, add this in, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you, uh, excuse me, it's not an option, you have to buy it as a separate tank, but nonetheless, that, that is available. Rich, I, I, I've covered some ground here. Do we have any questions yet? It's, uh, yeah, we probably, do, uh, in fact. We okay. have a couple of great questions. Um, so here's a question. Uh, what happens if it's installed backwards? That's a great question. 
The answer is it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so how does, um, does Arnold, this, what's Arnold Schwarzenegger say? Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't, don't do, do that. that. In install it correctly. Um, uh, yes, there, there's actually uh, uh, some great uh, instructions in there, and uh, the arrows are shown uh, how to install it. Um, uh, so uh, 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 as Rich just said, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Things things won't work. It won't it won't do what it's supposed to do. And the next question is: Are we able to get custom inlet or outlet sizes on these tanks? If so, what is the cost like for this? And I think you already <laughs> covered that. There's only they're very specific sizes for specific flows, right, Brad? Right. Um, uh, you know, you know, one one thing I've learned about our our good friends in Fall River, um, uh, they're 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 a custom capable shop. Um, whether they can make this component customable, cu is that a word? Customable? You, you know what customable. I'm saying. Is that yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I made up that word. I don't know if it's a real word. Yeah, or not. Between the two of us, I'm sure neither of us got the word right, but hopefully they understand what we're talking about. Um, uh, you, you would have to uh, get in touch with your Takeo rep who can get in touch with the folks in Fall River uh, to, to see whether or not it, it is uh, available. Um, uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't, but I'd be surprised if it was too. Uh, I, I, to be quite honest, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, maybe our friend Ronnie can type something in and help me out with uh, that one. That's a great question though. But I, I do know the folks in Fall River, um, uh, I keep saying Fall River, right? Our, our, our welded products division uh, uh, make things customable for, for on all kinds of projects. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, you, you were able to uh, work something in, in that regard. The only problem is this is a, uh, a patent pending uh, component and maybe uh, maybe uh, working with the flow rates that are in there and whatnot, that may not be um, as um, uh, available as, as, uh, on, as it is on some products. Great question though. Something we can learn from Rich, right? <laughs> yeah, we have a few more questions here. Let's see. We talked about uh, custom sizes. Um, would we ever use this uh, tank on an HVAC system as opposed to a domestic water system? And uh, yeah, I'll let you handle that one, Brett. Well, um, there, there's no reason you can't. There's no reason you can't. It's probably not as um, um, uh, widely uh, required as it is on domestic. Uh, but uh, you know, the, with, with the type of systems that are going in now, uh, you know, Legion Air uh, on some chilled water systems, uh, maybe when chill beams or low, lower temperatures, higher temperatures. Um, uh, what would you think to that, Rich? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. We can use this on an HVAC system if we're concerned about uh, stagnant uh, water and, and the potential of uh, hazardous material collecting in our expansion tank. Yeah, this is a great solution for uh, both HVAC and domestic water systems. Great question. You can see the flow in here is a swirling flow. We're going to have a little video without sound shortly that so shows that. So um, it really does um, uh, help. Uh, it, it prevents stagnation of that water. It's uh, it, it flows. Uh, you know the, the 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 tube in here has the holes uh, near the bottom, as you can see, and it swirls around as it goes back up and out. So um, it really does do a nice job. Now keep in mind, this does not this does not prevent Legionella or any other type of uh, uh, bad stuff, it it does it doesn't eliminate it from the system, it prevents it from this tank. Um, so uh, please keep that in mind as well. It's not like a filter um, that that's removing uh, bad stuff or 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 anything like that. But it does, you know, if water is stagnating in that tank, it's not going to uh, it, it's going to circulate that so that, to prevent it uh, from. Uh, entering the the rest of the system from this tank great question so we have a, a, a couple of other quick questions brett uh, they're really yeah. i think uh, these are great questions today is the sizing based on the gpm or still on the system volume still still on the system volume you size these tanks um and size slash select and specify these tanks like like any other um uh, tank um uh, CA um, full full acceptance bladder tank that you um, uh, specify today. So it is not on system volume. Uh, excuse me, flow rate. It is on system volume. 
So if you go back to that diagram where you showed the piping, Brett, Oop. if you go back to that for a second. Where'd you go? There we there go. Yep. So um, this gives, uh, so for the different size tanks that we have, and, and Brett's put this nice little uh, chart together. So let's say that you had, I'm just going to uh, make up a number. Let's say that you had a system that had 100 gallons per minute flow. Then you, you use this piping arrangement if you wanted to use a CAF 300 to a CAF uh, 800 between those two ranges. They'd be limited to uh, uh, 80 gallons per minute. So if you had 100 gallons per minute, then you would set up your bypass so that 80 would go to the tank and 20 would go through the bypass. And then you add those back together, like Brett has got it here. That would be 100 gallons per minute. So Rich, you, thank, you, can thank you for using simple math. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for using <laughs> simple math. <laughs> I know. We like, we like Hallelujah. Math. So you would size the tank um, initially as you would any other expansion tank. And then once you get the right size, you'd look on this chart and you'd say, okay, let maybe make make sure that let's assume that it, again in this little diagram, a CAF 300 was going to do the job. Uh, but now you have to check to find out what the flow is in the system. And then you have to set the piping up the way Brett has demonstrated here to ensure that it operates properly. Let me what? see. There's. Uh, Let's see. Is the uh, well. Let me. Uh, let's do this. Why don't you continue, and I will re read through these yep. questions, Brett, and yep. then I'll I'll pick a few for you to answer because yep. we got some, uh, uh, great questions in here. Yep. And, and notice. Yep. So um, why do we need it? Uh, I kind of talked about it before, but uh, here's some bullet points uh, on why it's needed. Um, we're eliminating stagnant water inside the full acceptance bladder. So if you think about a, a system, right, it's operational, one, one, uh, you know, it goes up to 180 degrees, I'm talking hot water, right, uh, um, and it's, the water is expanding, it goes, sits in that tank, it, it, maybe it can get stagnant, right, it's, it's just going to sit in there. Now, with this, with this uh, flow through, that water is going to uh, swirl around. We're going to induce water into it. So we, we, we put some in. Whatever goes in is going to come back out and flow in the system. So nothing's going to sit in that tank, right? So we're purging that water that's circulating the system. And by doing that, we're eliminating nearly all unwanted biohazard material, such as Legionella. Um, so that's, you know, that, that's why we need this. That's why the industry needs it, especially on, uh, on uh, domestic type uh, systems. Um, as you can only imagine, um, uh, you know, uh, it's not that prevalent, but it is out there. We all need to be concerned about it. And, and here's a way to uh, make sure that that's um, not a concern in an expansion tank. OK, so the, with the flow through and, and we like it, uh, you know, there, there's, other, there's other folks that have them out there. This this the way this flow is, um, it, it's circulating around and pushing it back up. So um, we, we're inducing the water all the way down to the bottom of the tank. Or, or the bag, right? I should I, I tank slash bag because the water is inside the bag, um, um or bladder, uh, you know, uh, and, and so w none of that water is ever going to be stagnant because the, the way it swirls around and comes back up. So, um, uh, Rich, keep your fingers crossed. I've tried this; it worked. Here's a little video, um, uh, that that we actually uh, th that our fine marketing team, second to none. We have a marketing team that's second to none out there. Fantastic folks. Um, uh, th th there is no sound, but let's see if it plays. It's a YouTube video. Keep your fingers crossed. Jim Prisby, keep your fingers crossed out there. You can see the swirling and the water comes back out and up the top. It's working, Brett. It's working. Woo. Thank God. Anyways, help stop the risk of Legionella and other bacteria. So that's that's the reason for it. I don't think we need to go much farther. Well, advertising is always fun. Anyways, that's that's a, a quick video to kind of give you an idea of what's going on on the internals um, of this. Um, and, and again. 
Um, why we need it? It's el eliminate stagnant water. That's the that's the bottom line. That's what it's doing. It is a CA tank. You've seen the performance uh, and whatnot there. <clears throat> and you can get some uh, certifications. Um, it, it does. Um, uh, it can be NSF cert certified. Uh, please read the instruction sheets. If, if you go for these certifications, um, it, it comes with the stainless steel connections. Um, it, it has to be uh, mounted in the correct uh, location uh, in the uh, domestic system. Uh, but nonetheless, it can get that certification. It helps meet that ash rate guidelines. It does have a stainless steel connection. And it's a true, you know, uh, like I said, uh, this is a big bullet point. It is a true flow through design, a, very, a true flow through design. So um, that, that's something that's uh, very important to uh, remember and slash realize as well. And selection, like I said, I'm going to select one. Um, you can see the model numbers right here with the Fs, uh, right? That whole range right here, but you select it the same way. And when I get through with the uh, next uh, portion of the presentation talking about the uh, magnetic uh, uh, air and dirt, um, I will go to our website and, and select one just so you can see that it's the same, right? Uh, someone asked about flow rate, uh, volume. No, it's still, vo it's still volume. And then you got to pipe it up correctly in your details uh, once you do select the, the one you need for your application. So something to be considered there. So Rich, if you don't have any questions, uh, I'm going to transition to the 4900 series air and magnetic dirt separator. Actually, we, we have uh, a, a, a whole series of questions, but they're all around the same general topic. And I think we can answer them by going back to your diagram one more time. Okay. So several people well, have asked- uh, Diagram two? Yeah, that's it right there. Go ahead. And so several people have, well, actually the previous one, the one that showed the, there you go. Um, so if we, uh, several people have asked the question, uh, should we design the flow for the tank to be equal to the maximum flow? It doesn't have to be the maximum flow, but we do recommend that it's fairly close to the maximum flow. So again, using the example of the 80 gallons per minute maximum, uh, we'd want to make sure that we were somewhere between 80 to 100 percent of that design flow, yes, to ensure that we get the uh, turbulence that we're looking for inside the tank and also to ensure that we're getting the flow through characteristics. And then several people said, well, should we add uh, balancing valves? And and actually, we don't um, uh, we don't show the the balancing uh, methodology here because it can vary. Uh, people, uh, you know, use all kinds of uh, devices for ensuring uh, flow. They they could use a, a you know a, a pressure independent uh, control valve. They could use uh, uh, what's the one that that we provide, Brett? I always forget the name of it. Sure Flow? No. Yeah. Um... I don't know if that's the name of it. Uh, Jim will know. Jim will jump in here and he'll tell I'm me sure. what. Yeah. <laughs> AccuFlow. Thanks, Jim. AccuFlow. AccuFlow. Yeah, you could use that. The point is you could use a variety of different techniques. And we, we don't show that here because uh, it depends on, you know, the flows that you're looking for, the size of the pipe, the different devices. There are a myriad of ways of, of doing that. So several people have asked, um, should we show the balancing uh, valve or the AccuFlow valve? And, and I think that we want to try to keep it as generic as possible so that people understand the basic concept and then they can apply their own uh, details as to how they want. And then the other question that came up, and I, we may have to defer this uh, answer, yeah. what is the pressure drop uh, across our device? So again, let's use the 80 gallon per minute maximum flow. If that happened to be a CAF 800, and if we had 80 gallons per minute flowing through that, what would be the pressure drop? And I think that's something we're going to have to do a little research on. I know that after talking to Ron, the pressure drop is negligible, but I think it's important that we give folks uh, an actual value. So we, we can defer that question and we'll get back to folks with uh, the, the right uh, value so that they can select properly. And then we have one question in here, is the bypass pipe ratio always that 20% you illustrated? And no, the, it's not. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a fixed percentage. As long as the flow through the 
um, flow through expansion tank special valve uh, is within the limits in this little chart here. And also that other chart that you had a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, so there's there's an idea that you've got, uh, exactly, 50. right. You, you could have 160 gallons per minute, in which case your flow would be 50%, that sort of thing. Okay, so um, at this point, um, oh, one other person asked, uh, is there a minimum flow? And again, I would answer that by saying, I uh, would recommend that you select to be roughly 80% of the maximum flow, which would be your minimum flow. And that's to ensure that you get enough turbulence and also you get enough water that's diverted uh, to the tank and through the tank. I tell you, so all I, great We questions. do have a few other questions, Brett, but uh, let's, uh, why don't we save those other questions to the end so that we can cover the uh, magnetic air and dirt separate. I tell you, all great questions, though. Um, as usual, the the the, uh, the audience has stepped up to the plate, and uh, um, anyone that watched the home run derby last night, they've hit a home run, like like the folks uh, out in LA last yesterday. So let's talk about the uh, 4900 series air and magnetic dirt separator. So there's a, a a quick picture of it, and we're gonna go over what it is, what is it? You know, the, the same bullets as before. How does it work? Why do we need it? And, and questions, okay? I hope anyways. Well, first off, first off, it's important to realize that it is a, um, a option of a 4900 series air and dirt separator. Okay, so this magnet is an option of one of those separators. And notice this picture uh, depicts one without a removable cover that this one has. So that's another option. So uh, if you've ever um, uh, specified our air and dirt separators or worked with a Takeo rep, um, there's different options for these components. This this magnetic part of it is an option of a traditional, excuse me, uh, air and dirt separator that has um, the Paul ring technology. And this is a picture of that Paul ring technology right here. Uh, so that this these Paul rings are located inside of the vessel, right? And uh, um, th th they help remove the air and dirt down to, uh, they remove all air. Uh, the only thing they don't remove is entrained air. Um, uh, believe it or not. And uh, the microns, it's down to, uh, what was it down to 18 microns. So um, these things are very, very efficient to remove an air and dirt. But what is it? Okay, so this is a, uh, here's the air and dirt, uh, magnetic dirt separator. It's a conventional 4900, like I just said, air and dirt fitted, fitted down here with a manual hand operated on off magnet. Okay, so you can kind of see a picture of it. This is an artist rendition. Right there's that magnet, uh, th this handle, and believe it or not, that handle is very easy to turn. I was able to do it. Right, uh, I'm a 63 year old uh, old fart, and I, I could do it. So I'm sure all this, the young people in the crowd could do it as well. I I I I, I digest. I, I I leave topic a little bit there, but another, it's very easy to uh, manipulate that handle to turn the uh, magnet on and off, and you can see. Uh, another nice comp component here is we, uh, all of ours above three inch and above have a, a two inch blowdown valve, right? So you can blow down any any of the dirt that uh, gets in here or the uh, metal that this is a magnet is going to um, release once it uh, gets catches it. And what's nice about this blowdown valve is it's big enough to get a wand in there and you can rinse that out uh, or, or it can be rinsed out. You can get a wand in there and rinse that out as well. So uh, keep that in mind, but that, that, that's, that's what it is. And here's uh, how it works, okay? Water flows in, right? We have the air vent up top, air bubbles uh, get caught by the Paul rings, right? They start to um, coalesce their way up to the top and they go out the top as water. And then uh, dirt also hits uh, you know, stuff that's in there hits those Paul rings and starts to fall down. And the ferrous material, which is very, very small, very, very tiny, um, with this magnet on is going to be attracted. That magnet is very, very strong. Um, uh, it's rated, uh, I'm not, I'm, I forget all the, how it's all rated. It's, a, it, it's spelled out in, the, in our submittal data in, in the catalog. But when that, mag, when that internal magnet's on, it is going to um, uh, attract all of that ferrous metal uh, down to the bottom, and then whenever it is blown down or cleaned, you turn the magnet off, 
turn the magnet off. And this is all spelled out in the instruction sheet. It's very, very simple though. Very, very simple, right? Well, I, we recommend you shut it off, right? Shut the flow off both sides, shut the flow off on both sides. This is a maintenance uh, time, right? You're gonna clean this uh, co component out, turn the magnet off. You just, you just flip that handle. It's as easy as that. You, you break the polarity and uh, open up the blowdown valve. And now all of that, those components are gonna come out down the bottom. Um, uh, so very simple, uh, it, it, it's very simple. And uh, I am a, a, big, uh, a big proponent of KISS, right? Keep it simple. And then whatever word you want to put at the end, stupid, I guess, is uh, that's what uh, good terminology for me to say about myself. But nonetheless, uh, keep it simple, right? It's the kiss, uh, kiss, uh, um, kiss principle in, in that regard. Very, very simple. Um, and this magnet is very, very powerful. Uh, if anyone uh, was out at uh, the ASHRAE show in Vegas, we had a demo of it. And that thing, uh, that magnet was picking up ball bearings uh, uh, very, very quickly in, in our little demo unit. Uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty crazy to watch. Um, and, and again, the ferrous material comes in, internal magnet is off, blow down. You, know, you, you can see the, this picture here, the magnet's on. This picture here, the magnet's off, the polarity's broken and the ferrous material is able to be blown down at, at, at down the bottom. And again, keep your fingers crossed, Rich. I have a video, no sound, that should um, uh, uh, show you what uh, we're talking about here. Uh, again, keep your fingers crossed. And you can see the handle right here, right? So some of the metal, and then you turn, you turn the handle down, and then that ferrous material works its way down to the bottom and you can blow it out down the bottom. Very, very straightforward, um, very easy. Um, uh, like I said, very simple to use. Um, you do not need to remove. I, I wanna emphasize that. I, I'm gonna close this out, go back to my uh, uh, screen. I hope I didn't do that. This magnet does not need to be removed. Very important, very, very important. That's a, That should be a specifiable um, uh, item in your spec. Um, I, Removing magnets from metal components is not easy. Um, uh, they, they tend to stick, right? Right. So this magnet does not need to be removed um, in order to uh, clean it, uh, to, to get the ferrous metal out and to get it out of the system, right? That, that's the goal of this, right? That is to get the, the, the metal out. This magnet does not need to be removed. And that, that, that's a game changer. Uh, maybe uh, so some of you may uh, are familiar with other folks out there. Um, that, that is a, a big different differentiator uh, for this component right here. So um, that, that's something to consider. This magnet does not need to be removed. I can't emphasize that enough. Performance data, the same as a 4900, right? Flows up to, uh, uh, get them bigger, baby, but uh, it, 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 call, call, call your takeo rep. Uh, if you have a, uh, an application for 30 GPM, 30,000 GPM, uh, we'll we'll get right on it. The the boys in Fall River will start start working on it right now. You can see the connection sizes. Um, and I I've been on some I've been on uh, two installations. Uh, one to see that uh, 36 inch, and another one to see a uh, the 34 inch down in Florida as well. And you can see the high the sizes, the different working pressures. If you need a higher pressure, it's it's available. I I, I gotta believe most of those applications you're gonna be in that uh, that range there. Uh, but the the performance data is is identical identical to the 4900s that you're that hopefully all of you are familiar with today. Uh, and then uh, uh, here's the uh, features: uh, an on-off uh, magnet for black iron oxide and magnetic ma magnetite removal. So that's what that magnet is, and it's designed to that ASME. Uh, so two psi or less pressure drop. Someone asked about the pressure drop on our uh, on our on the uh, flow through. Uh, that we need to answer, but this is uh, our, our 4900s are designed with two psi uh, 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 that uh, flow rates shown on submittals, which are which are almost identical. I think they are identical to the uh, high flow rate on the pipe diameter that you're looking at there. Uh, very easy to um, select them, uh, and uh, they do have an air vent up top uh, that you uh, to, to help blow down, and then a full port blow down at the bottom. So. Uh, you, pretty straightforward there. And again, I, I want to emphasize that it is a pressure vessel. So it does, um, is constructed and tested to ASME um, uh, 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 components. Uh, here's a simple proposed piping diagram. Pretty straightforward. There's really no difference, uh, you know, um, as where, where you locate it, 
uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just locate it right right in the line. Um, uh, and, and that's some, that's a differentiator for these coalescing type. And, and other people have them. Uh, they're not all this color. There, there's, there's some other ones out there. Um, uh, but um, uh, uh, it's inline, right? So it, you don't have, uh, some of you may be familiar with air and dirt separators uh, where you go in, the, 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 go in up top and come, uh, come out at the bottom. They're swirling type. Uh, so these, these type are inline piping makes that a little simpler. But really, um, if you're familiar with um, uh, a detail on your uh, MEP drawings for a, a typical 4900, it's the same for uh, the piping is the same for, for, for these here as well. Um, so pretty, pretty straightforward there. And you can get some more information from the instruction sheet uh, in that regard. So uh, just keep that in mind. So why, why do we need it? Okay. Um, and, and this is an important, uh, important. Here's, here's one of those things I talked about up front that, that has evolved over time in our, in our, uh, um, in the HVAC hydronic industry. These ECM uh, motor driven pumps have powerful magnets that attract ferrous material. And if so, if there's any ferrous material in there, these, the, the, these pumps are going to start attracting that, right? So uh, no matter how good your, uh, I mean, our 4900 gets uh, down to those microns, but those, that ferrous material can be smaller than that. It can, it can get through there and get through everyone else's as well. Um, uh, so th that, what's going to happen if that, if that does, if that ferrous material gets into the pump, th it's going to start ca causing damaging bearings and internal parts. So um, as you can only imagine, that's what's going to happen, and that's going to cause potentially could cause premature failure. So that's that's why the why. I mean, we had a project in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, uh, where we had some ferrous pipe, and uh, we actually had Mick uh, a, a situation with Mick. This was well before we had this magnet situation, but we were able to assist them with the 4900. Uh, but it didn't uh, take care of all their problems. So now uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't upgrade to one with the uh, magnet in it. Uh, to, to uh, eliminate the metal or the ferrous material that, that's in there as well. So that's why we need it. That's why it's needed out in the industry. Um, uh, and, and I can't emphasize that enough. Any questions on this one, Rich? Uh, this is a pretty straightforward um, uh, presentation for, for this Yeah, component. we got some great questions. Um, I'm going to answer the first one. Now, the oh, one good. question was, can an existing 4900 width strainer be retrofit with the magnet? And the answer is absolutely not. You cannot take an ASME rated vessel and modify it in the field. You will uh, basically make it a non-ASME vessel. So it has to be done um, as part of the manufacturing process in order to maintain your ASME certification. So we never ever recommend that any type of pressure vessel be modified in the field. Okay, the next question is, uh, and I'm gonna let uh, you handle this one, Brett. Oh, by the way, uh, Jim Prisby uh, came back. He said the name of the magnets. I, I always have difficulty pronouncing uh, this. It's called it neodymium. With an N. I know that. Neodymium magnets. Neodymium. That's right. How's that, Jim? Neodymium. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks for telling us that. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, Jim see, says see, I, <laughs> Rich, I purposely kept that word out of my presentation, and you know yeah. why now. <laughs> Not, yeah, because I, that's got a lot of syllables in it. You know how we are, Brett. You and I like uh, like two syllable words. We're just kiss, uh, kiss, kiss, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's the, I'm going to let you answer this. What is the difference between a dirt separator and a strainer? When would you use one over the other? And it's kind of a it's a, a it's not really a trick question, but uh, yeah, what's the difference between a dirt separator and a strainer? Uh, the model numbers are different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, a dirt strainer is a strainer. Um, it, it has the paw rings in it. Um, it doesn't have the uh, vent at the top, I'm, I'm assuming. I'd have to go to our catalog. Uh, but um, it, it's uh, made to eliminate the, the dirt out of the system. And you may have um, other ways to eliminate the air out of the system. Well, I think I think the uh, question was probably they wanted to know what is the difference between an air and dirt separator and a strainer. And, and the answer is that a strainer, if it's a conventional Y strainer or an end suction diffuser with a strainer in it, it does not remove air, which is uh, why the air and dirt separator has the option for the magnet, because we want to be able to re get rid of the air and the dirt. So, yeah, if it's a strainer, 
and it's conventional Y strainer or a strainer that's inside of an in suction diffuser, it gets rid of particles but not air. So it doesn't do both. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. How is the it, magnet turned on and off? Uh, I think you touched base on that, but it's it's not electrical. It's manual. So maybe go through that, Brett, one more time. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know where a better picture. I guess we don't have a. I don't have a better picture. But all you do is. Um, well, you know what? Where's the? Um, let's watch this video again. Watch this video very, very closely, and this video is going to show you how hard it is to turn the magnet on and off. It's manual. See, it's yeah. In the see this valve right here. It's then, on right now. It's on, and then when to shut it off, you just now it's off. And you, it Ninety degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that probably is the best way to answer that question, right, Rich, with a visual. <laughs> on okay and then you yeah. just move the handle down and off simple as that let's see what else we got here great question yeah i know it okay so how often and for what length of time do the magnet and blow down uh, valves need to be opened uh, i can answer i can actually answer this one <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the uh, quality of the water in your system this is something that we we uh, you know we harp on all the time um, so it, it, with, with a, let's assume it's a brand new system and even brand new systems can have material inside the pipe and say, well, where does that material come from if it's a brand new system? Well, if you've ever looked at a job site, especially if the material like the piping was delivered to the job and it happened to be sitting out in the, uh, you know, on the job site, it could be literally in the sitting in mud or sand or there's all kinds of ways in which material can find its way inside a piping system so you build the piping system and then when you do the startup usually uh we we say we use startup strainers um or screens or whatever to get the majority of the material off. but once the once the, all the material is out of the system in terms of normal operation it's the quality of the water that determines how often you have to blow down something because uh, the more, uh, the, the better the uh, uh, chemical treatment is and the better the maintenance, the idea is to keep the water as clean and uh, air and dirt free as possible. So if you have a very well-maintained system, then the interval of blowing down is longer. And so what we typically recommend and maybe we should put this in our installation manual, is that you, uh, when you initially start up the system that you blow it down let's say on a daily or weekly basis until you get fairly clean water out of it um, between intervals. So in other words, if you blow it down on Monday and then you blow it down on Tuesday and there's still material in the system, then you're scheduled to blow it down on Wednesday. And then when it becomes clean, then you can start increasing your interval and a good, you know, if you have a system that's well-maintained, it's got good chemical treatment and all those other things, the interval can increase. So it depends on the quality of the water in the system, and we don't actually provide equipment. Um, I, I'm sorry, we don't uh, publish uh, ways in which you can maintain the quality of the water in your system. We're not a chemical treatment company. We don't provide any of those other things. So the, the better the quality of water, the, uh, the longer the frequency has to be for blowdown. Did, did, so I'm going to you know, try to, a couple of other questions here, Brett, and I'm going to pass them off to you. Yep. Let's see, where did we? Let's see. We talked about. Um, oh, here's a quick. Here's a quick one. This is cool. Is dirt the industry word for ferrous material? And oh. the answer is no. no. No, because dirt can be made up of. Uh, when we use the word dirt, it actually could be made up of uh, particles of silica, moist. Uh, could be sand. It can be almost anything. Uh, ferrous material usually comes from the normal process of uh, uh, over time as the uh, as oxygen attacks the uh, internal components of equipment and the piping system, it will uh, turn to fire ferrous or rust, and that's that's what we're taking out. Um, I, go ahead, Brett. Um, I, yeah, Ronnie and his team have actually got a call. Got a call from a customer one time or a maintenance guy saying that our 4900 stopped working, and uh, it's hard for a component. Like, this was pre-magnet, right? We didn't have a magnet in, in that, so they you start asking questions, right? So why why did it start working? Because well, when I 
open up the uh, valve, you know, I, sh I, I close it, I open up the valve, the water coming out, it's all clean. That's good. That means all the stuff. <laughs> that means you got a clean system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, what happened? What happened with non-ferrous material, uh, copper, bronze, uh, so on and so forth. Um, the, uh, the Paul rings, as you can see from this uh, bullet, these bullet points here, uh, the, the uh, traditional air and dirt uh, method of the 4900s, the Paul rings will remove 100% uh, particles, 150 microns and larger, um, at 3.5 per second. And um, um, and able to remove particles as small as five microns. Um, so the traditional Paul rings remove the um, uh, the the, the non-ferrous material components. Yeah, I think the uh, the thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, the whole concept here is that the ferrous material is the one that's going to be attracted by the uh, magnets in the the pumps and in, and in some cases other components in the system. So uh, yeah, that's the purpose of the uh, magnetic and, air and dirt because and, the, the pumps, the, the high, the very very high strength magnet uh, is not going to attract uh, copper material. And and that ferrous material um, in many cases is very very small, smaller than five microns. So um, it could still be entrained in that, uh, in that water or will still be entrained and, and find its way to places it shouldn't be. Thus, you need this um, uh, magnet um, um, option. Uh, so uh, someone asked, and I think you answered, I think we just answered this question, but I, I'd, I'd like to read it because apparently there's some confusion out there. It says, what are the physics when turning the handle, it turns it off? Is it electric? And the answer is no, it's not electric. There are there, no there. external electrical components. It's the position of the magnet inside the housing that determines whether or not it's uh, in, in the attraction or the um, disposal position, I guess is what, uh, or that's the, on the, the uh, uh, That's the secret sauce inside the unit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it but really no. is 100% um, mechanical. There are no, uh, there are right. no electrical devices. Yep. And again, it does not need to be removed. It does not need to be pulled out, right? So you just very easily turn that handle down and the magnets off and the ferrous material um, drops off and uh, floats to the bottom or goes to the bottom of the tank. Uh, this is a great question, Brett. Does the tank, uh, let's see, does the tank magnet valve have an on and off label to easily understand its position? And and I believe it is labeled. Yes, um, it's labeled. Yeah. yeah, I think it is labeled. We don't have a picture of it. Maybe uh, no. that'll be great. We could add that to our next presentation. That's a great yep. question. Yeah. Yep. But basically, when the handle is in the horizontal position, it's on, and what's in the vertical position, it's off. That'd be and one of those. That that'd be that'd be one of those mechanical things that if it if it wasn't to my liking when it came out in the field, I would go over there. I'm a maintenance guy, and I would write on and off on there with a piece of tape. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to get a photograph of uh, the actual mechanism to uh, yeah. know it's labeled. Let's see how are we doing for time here, Brett. Brett, we're just we're yeah. almost out yeah. of time. Yeah, uh, we have a couple of other questions. Let's see. Um, do you have a photo of the actual installation? And I don't know. I don't know that we have a. Uh, Photograph of an actual installation. Uh, that's it, a great. That's a great ask. So we'll, we'll wait, make sure we add one of those. These, these units are just. Um, they were just available to order uh, the beginning of June, um, and uh, as you can only imagine, we're in the middle of July. I can't believe I'm saying this. It's the middle of July already. Um, that uh, they're just being uh, uh, sent out to projects. So there's there's very few, if any, installed yet. But we will have some pictures of some installations uh, shortly. Oh, we did, we got a uh, Jim was kind enough to uh, get a an email from Ron Ron uh, Falcon. He said it is labeled. It is labeled. Okay, excellent. So yeah, I, I I made Ron an organizer so he could unmute himself. But um, I I, I anyways. Uh, well, yeah. every everybody knows Ron. He's a very shy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and be be on the alert. I, I did want to uh, uh, do a uh, shout out to our, our our fabulous marketing team at Takeo. Uh, that, that that you'll see some of this advertising and, and trade and print magazines. Uh, the product catalogs are available. Uh, hopefully you've all downloaded them from uh, today's presentation. You can also get them from our website. Uh, so they are available on our website as well. And then uh, we do have some uh, banners and, and whatnot that are that you'll see out in, out, out in there. We're, you know, an old uh, company in HVAC, uh, when you come out with a new product, it, it's very, very exciting. And um, uh, He's, the, the folks that were behind this uh, did a hell, hell of a job, heck of a job uh, of putting this together. Um, and and um, uh, so I, I did want to make sure uh, if you're reading ASHRAE journals or other journals, you'll see it and, and the catalogs available and, and whatnot. So now I am at the question question uh, component. Um, so anyways. Well, at this point, uh, I think we're uh, we're just about out of time here, and um, so I think uh, for those of you that have some additional questions, if you could pose those to your uh, reps, and they will get some answers for you. If they need to uh, forward those questions to Brett and I and Ron, we'll be able to uh, give you written responses. Um, that was a great uh, great information, Brett. This is fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, that, well, you know, it's a it's an easy subject to talk about because um, the, the uh, information that's available and, and knowledge that uh, you and Ronnie uh, sent my way uh, helped me out a lot. So I appreciate that. Well, I really appreciate all the great questions we got from the audience today. It really uh, is going to help us uh, improve our presentation right. and uh, make sure we include this additional information uh, going forward. So yeah, this is this was great stuff. I, Before I mean, we uh, sign off, do we have any last minute uh, questions out there? I know that uh, we have so, a few so, questions that we did not answer, but we need to do uh, make sure we have the correct answer before we, we give. So, um, so, so somebody typed in, Rich, that uh, it's as simple as that handle changing the polarity. So there's no wires in there or anything like that. The, the handle, ch as you push that handle down, it changes the polarity and all of a sudden the magnet's off. The, yeah, the, from a manufacturing a perspective, uh, we don't have to uh, we don't have to buy any uh, integrated circuits. We don't have to uh, uh, get any kind of uh, chips. There's no chip shortage when it comes to these expansion. I mean, it's air and dirt right. separators with the magnets and stuff like that. And uh, actually, um, I, the the thought process that uh, chat that um, had the the team at Fall River uh, think about this was. These folks at their factory pick up massive pieces of four by eight by in, over inch thick pieces of steel, right? And they move them around and they with magnets. And they're like, "Hey, that's a big strong magnet. Can we mod? Can we use that or, or somehow modify it for our for our uh, uh, our new developing product?" And that's that's where that thought process came from. But uh, nonetheless. I just I want to repeat a quick housekeeping thing. Someone asked, how do we get the PDH certificates? And uh, you should get an email in, in roughly 24 hours that allows you to download your PDH certificate and also to uh, download the recording. Uh, yep. So we have recorded this so you can have it for future reference. I see the last question up there, Rich. Uh, I don't think either of us can answer that one. Maybe Ronnie can because he's, he's as knowledgeable Maybe Jim Prisby can, but uh, uh, Wayne is asking, do we have tonight's mega ball? Uh, do we have tonight's uh, uh, four, 500 plus million dollar uh, mega, mega million number? numbers? Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we don't have them. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, but I think uh, <laughs> if you attend this, uh, if, if you do attend this uh, presentation the whole, and the whole, if you should win the mega ball uh, drawing, and you win the $500 million, uh, because you were uh, an audience today, you're obligated to share your winnings with Brett and I. I think that's pretty standard, isn't it, Brett? I think so, yeah, it's right. It's right. I think it's right. Uh, they, they, they didn't know when they signed up, they signed, they signed their life away in that regard. Yeah, so yeah, that, that uh, <laughs> if you see some things charged to your Amazon account, it's only Brett and I uh, getting some nice things that we need for our house. So according to Jim Prisby, the first one, was ordered for the state of Wisconsin. Uh, so it'll be installed soon. So uh, thank you, Wisconsin. Nice. Great state, great state. 
I think cheese and cheese and uh, magnetic separation. Uh, there we go. Yeah, just think of that. We can instead of calling them uh, <laughs> cheese heads, we can call them mag magnet heads. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. I'm done yapping, Rich. Uh, take it away. Thanks, everybody. Well, Thank you everyone for uh, participating in uh, today's presentation. Uh, again, uh, if you do have some questions that we were not able to answer, please uh, forward your questions to your uh, local uh, rep representative and uh, they should be able to answer the question. And if not, the, the, we are more than happy to uh, field those questions. And between, uh, uh, between Brett and I and, and Ronnie Falcon, uh, we should be able to answer your questions. And thank you so much for the, your questions in general, because like I said, we can improve our presentation and incorporate some of that information that you have uh, cost. Someone asked for cost comparison. There's several people asked for cost, and I'm going to defer that. So if you could please call your local rep or send them an email and get the, the uh, cost. Um, one thing that Brett and I, uh, we, we always, uh, we're always repeating over and over again, Brett and I don't get involved with the cost. It's a much more complex uh, question to answer than, than we have the skill label to do. But the reps do. They know uh, all about uh, the cost and shipping and uh, deliveries and all that kind of stuff. So um, hopefully you'll be able to get that information by uh, chatting with your rep. So until next time, thanks again one more time. And uh, we're just about ready to sign off. This is Rich Medeiros, and then we have Brett. Brett, say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks again. Take care. That's it Bye. for today.